The Dominican Republic was in the news recently for some strange deaths in tourist hotels. But behind the scenes, there's much worse going on. There's charges of lynchings of Haitians by bigoted Dominicans on the island that they both share. I'll be speaking to Rudy Joseph. He's coordinator general of Haitians DR. We're going to talk about an open letter signed by a good number of people outraged about these lynchings in the Dominican Republic. And a friend of his will be doing translations. Good evening, Rudy Joseph. Buenas tardes, Rudy. Good afternoon. I'm happy to have this uh, conversation with you and to be able to talk about this uh, subject. Great. Now, first, for those of us whose geography is a little hazy, where is the Dominican Republic? The Dominican Republic um, is sometimes uh, referred to uh, as a country that is uh, to the east of Haiti. Um, when when uh, people have the, the knowledge of where Haiti is, actually both countries share the same island which um, its original indigenous name was Quisqueya. And um, afterwards, when it was uh, under Spanish colonization, it was called Hispaniola. Uh, it's to the, to the northeast of Jamaica, um, also to the west of uh, Puerto Rico. So it's a, a, a country that, that is in, in this, um, important Caribbean island, uh, also close to, to the island of Cuba. Okay, so we have located the island for our listeners, and now there's a language difference. So what language is spoken in Dominican Republic and what in Haiti? In, in Haiti, the, um, the language that is mostly spoken is uh, Creole, um, and in, in written literature and um, uh, also higher education is mostly in French. Uh, while in the case of the Dominican Republic, the, the language that is uh, spoken is Spanish. And um, sometimes as a second language, uh, people speak English. However, uh, French is, is not a commonly spoken uh, language in the Dominican Republic. Okay, great. So we have the basics done. Now, let's talk about this open letter. Uh, it's up on rpm.world and other websites. And the title is Stop Xenophobic and Racist Lynchings in the Dominican Republic. Can you explain the problem? There have been many uh, incidents of uh, racist uh, lynchings in the Dominican uh, Republic um, throughout the, the 20th century and most recently there was a, um, an incident in the year 2000 uh, where the military opened fire on a truck with uh, Haitian immigrants killing six immigrants and one uh, uh, Dominican person um, that was the incident of Guayubin um, also, in the year 2014, in February, uh, a young uh, Haitian uh, boy was, was uh, hanged in a public park in the city of Santiago. Uh, his name was uh, Jean-Claude uh, Jean Harry, uh, his, his um, nickname was Tulil. And in the same city of Santiago, which is the second city in the Dominican Republic, we have uh, this, um, this crime of the, the lynching of uh, two Haitian workers, Victor Pierre, who ended up uh, dying because of the injuries sustained uh, during the, the attack by a racist mob. And also uh, the, the other uh, worker who survived, whose name was Esilom Atul. Um, this incident, which um, illustrates the, the situation of, of discrimination and, and uh, widespread uh, racial hatred in, in this country, started out when um, uh, a merchant 
called uh, Gabriel Beato. He was alerted by neighbors that uh, two Haitian men were um, in a tree taking down mangoes. And uh, they, they treated it as if it was a, a dangerous robbery. Uh, the, this man called Gabriel Beato came out with a gun shooting at uh, two men simply accused of uh, taking down mangoes from a tree. In this uh, shooting, uh, uh, he, a, a stray bullet killed a, a Dominican man called Daniel Espejo. He was trying to, to injure or kill uh, the two Haitians, but actually ended up uh, wounding a bystander who uh, died because of the, of the gun wounds. Um, he then, to cover up his crime, uh, stated that it had been the Haitians who had killed this uh, young man, Daniel Espejo. So he, he, he uh, created a hysteria in the, in the neighborhood. And so this, uh, this mob uh, started to, to form. And then uh, two uh, Haitian workers who happened to be uh, walking in the area who had no relation to the first incident uh, where the, the two agents who were shot at, they, they escaped. But these two other uh, workers who, whose names we, we said, Victor Pierre and Atule Silom, uh, they were uh, captured by this mob and beaten, one of them to death and the other one severely injured. Um, this uh, this story, which is um, it has been officially uh, uh, confirmed that this was the, the actual sequence of events, the the, the police investigation and, and all all official information confirms this is what actually happened. Um, this wasn't uh, properly uh, reflected in the local media. The, the it wasn't given its uh, due importance, um, perhaps because it's a, a very shameful incident. Also, there was no national uh, statement by the authorities condemning this uh, racist and uh, xenophobic crime. So we uh, thought that it was very important to uh, uh, bring this to, to light, to denounce this um, this terrible crime internationally to bring attention to to this situation, and that is the the intention in in which the manifesto was made. Now, with this latest um, lynching that I guess was June third, was the man who uh, did the shooting and told the lies, which started the mob. Was he arrested and punished? Uh, the information we have, uh, which we have um, acquired through uh, the Haitian consulate in uh, Santiago, is that uh, this man, Gabriel Beato Burgos, the man who, who, sh who fired uh, the shots that killed uh, Daniel Espejo and also incited the, the mob uh, to, to do the lynchings, he was arrested and uh, presented in to, to a court hearing, but uh, we are um, still confirming if what is his, his legal situation. We don't know. We uh, hope to, to gather new information soon. And also regarding the mob itself, uh, unfortunately, there is no information that they have been prosecuted, that anyone uh, in the mob who uh, killed and injured um, two Haitian men, that they have been charged with any crime as of yet. It all indeed. And also the information we have is that he has been charged only in relation to the death of Daniel Espejo, the, the young Dominican man who he shot, not in relation to uh, the inciting of uh, lynchings uh, or anything related to the death of uh, one Haitian man and uh, the injuries, severe injuries to another one. Mm -hmm. I understand. 
Now, how big a problem, how many, how many lynchings are we talking about, let's say, over 10 years? Uh, we, we have no official statistics on uh, the number of lynchings against uh, Haitian citizens in the last decade. However, we um, had access to uh, journalistic uh, work and an investigation by a, a independent uh, uh, journalism collective, which in the year 2018 had counted uh, up to 15 uh, lynchings against uh, Haitian persons uh, in the, between the year 2008 and 2018. So that is more than two uh, per year. However, that is only what is um, counted by these uh, journalists as being published in the media, which uh, we consider that the, the real number will be much higher since many of these cases do not even reach the, the big uh, press in this country. Now, in the open letter, uh, people complained that the Dominican government wasn't doing much about these outrages. Is that right? In the, la carta abierta. In, in the case of uh, Jean-Claude Hardy, uh, who was killed in 2014, uh, even though it was a case that became known internationally, it was a scandal, uh, in, even in that case, the authorities did not investigate that crime is still to this day unpunished. So the situation of impunity for this type of crimes is almost total. That is the responsibility of the government. The government regarding that case uh, only did a, a statements of, of its intention of investigating, but, but actually did not investigate and did not produce any results uh, regarding that horrible crime. Um, in, in February of this year, uh, when five years of the, of the killing of Dan Harry Claude, well, uh, Dan Claude Harry was, um, we were commemorating five years of that crime. Uh, we uh, again uh, denounced the inactivity or, or the, the impunity given by the government to, to this type of of violence. So there is a, a, a complicit uh, authority regarding this, this crime. Now, I, this is a question I should have asked really at the start. Can, what can you tell me about yourself, uh, Rudy? Are you Haitian or are you Dominican and why are you so concerned about this? Yes, so I am a, a Haitian uh, citizen. I was born in Haiti. I have been living in the Dominican Republic since I was 19 years old. And uh, first I came into contact with uh, this type of activism through social organizations linked to, to activism in, in the area of, of uh, the rights of immigrants. Um, but I, I perceived the, the necessity for um, organizing and, and having autonomous uh, political action by the, the Haitian community itself, that it has to defend its own rights um, and not, not depend on, on the help or, or solidarity it can um, get from, from outside. Um, in the case of uh, our organization, which has a, its complete name is uh, organized community uh, of Haitians. Uh, we, we think it's very important to develop a, a widespread conscience of what are the rights we have and to, to defend uh, really those rights uh, we have. I just have a couple more questions. I really appreciate uh, you taking the time for this. In the open letter, they, they mentioned uh, revoking birthright citizenship 
for a large number of uh, Dominicans. Can you explain what that's about? Yes, so um, in the year 2013, the Constitutional Court, the highest court in the Dominican Republic, issued uh, a verdict in which, uh, obviously this was a, a political, uh, politically motivated uh, decision, it decided to take away uh, the nationality of thousands of Dominican citizens who uh, were of Haitian descent. So uh, these are uh, Dominican citizens whose uh, father, mother, or grandparents uh, were um, Haitian. And what this uh, verdict did was to establish that um, these people who had uh, the, the birth certificate who were registered in the, in the uh, civil registry, who even had a, a ID, a Dominican ID, um, that they have been registered in a, in a fraud, in a fraudulent way, because their parents uh, were undocumented. Um, although the, the thing is that the laws and the constitution before this verdict uh, considered uh, those uh, registrations to, to be valid. What, what this verdict does is to try to invalidate the, the legal status of thousands of people in, in a retroactive uh, way. Es una barbaridad. Which is okay. a barbaric uh, legal uh, uh, maneuver. El está que se because the Dominican los, state, what he's saying is that it, it made a mistake when it issued those documents recomarlos. and now wants to eliminate those documents, which is, of course, uh, unacceptable. Uh, this concretely has a consequence for more than 100,000 uh, Dominicans who are at the risk of statelessness uh, because of this is this a uh, high court decision uh, which is uh, obviously m motivated by, by racist uh, considerations. Um, this is in, in some way uh, has a continuity of the policies uh, pushed forward by the dictatorship of Trujillo uh, in, the, in the 1930s, 40s and 50s. Um, which is a, a policy of ex extreme racism, which in the end what it uh, uh, hopes to achieve is to divide the working class. Uh, in this uh, sense, racism and capitalism are uh, closely uh, linked in this phenomenon because uh, what the verdict of the High Court does is to uh, put uh, an important sector of the working class who are Haitians and Dominicans of Haitian descent in a situation where they are deprived of basic rights and uh, because they are in a vulnerable situation they cannot defend properly and, and fight for uh, equal pay for equal labor, uh, equal labor rights. And this leads to the continuity of super exploitation of uh, this sector of the working class. So it, it wants to, to divide the working class on national and racial lines in order to have a, a sector that is uh, vulnerable to uh, super exploitation. Great. So my last question is if our listeners want to uh, support the Haitians who are being victimized, what could they do? It's very important to help uh, make more visible uh, this problem of, of racism and in particular the problem of racist lynchings in the Dominican Republic. So anything that is done in, in the sense of uh, um, making it, uh, this information available to a wider public is a, a welcome uh, form of 
solidarity. Um, also, it's, it's very important to, to demand justice in, in these crimes because when these crimes go unpunished, uh, this uh, stimulates further uh, racist violence. Regarding the manifesto uh, or open letter, uh, which we have talked about, um, it can be uh, shared widely. Um, we hope to be uh, giving to, to the authorities, handing them uh, this international manifesto on Monday 16th of September. So if that day anyone wants to uh, share information on, on social media, to uh, do anything in, in uh, simultaneously as we are uh, doing this activity, it will be helpful even if someone wants to, to go to a Dominican embassy and also uh, protest or, or express solidarity with this uh, struggle, it will be a, a very welcome um, expression of solidarity. Also, um, we would call on um, people who sympathize with, with this cause to pay special attention uh, as we are entering the presidential campaign for the 2020 elections in the Dominican Republic. During the campaign, it has become sadly a, a tradition that a populist racist rhetoric used by candidates uh, becomes a part of the campaign. Uh, it's an, a, a populist uh, a strategy to gain votes through nationalist and racist discourse. Um, and al always this, this type of, of uh, public speeches uh, incite further uh, criminal violence of a racist uh, motivation. Um, of course, this affects not only Haitians, it also affects uh, Dominican blacks. There is also racial discrimination against this uh, sector of uh, the Dominican society. Um, and uh, when candidates uh, use this, this type of rhetoric, obviously they, they are aggravating uh, existing social problems instead of uh, fighting them. Um, okay, aunque no other victims of this type of, of crimes, of hate crimes, uh, lynchings, um, when they are not Haitians, they are, a, uh, with a certainty, the Dominicans who are black, who live in poor uh, neighborhoods. And um, it's, a, it's a situation in which really the ideology of the Trujillo uh, dictatorship, we, which we mentioned, is perpetuated through, through this type of uh, public discourse and which is then uh, reflected in this type of, of mob violence. Um, that would be the, the call we are making. Well, thank you very much uh, for this interview, Rudy Joseph, and uh, for your friend who did a great job of translating. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias por la entrevista. No, gracias a ti. No, thank you, especially, and um, hopefully after the activity we will do on Monday, there will be new opportunities to, to talk about this ongoing struggle.